One more turn. If you have spent any time playing strategy games, this is a very familiar refrain. For decades, the Civilization games have pulled legions of gamers back to the keyboard for just one more turn. The gameplay mechanics are both fundamental and straightforward, yet grandiose in scope, a combination that grants immense entertainment value. But like Rome, Civilization was not built in a day. And in this video, we're going to take a look back at the early days of Microprose and the development of the first Civilization. We're also going to delve into the game's legacy. I spoke with fellow creators Drew, Stacy, Hadrian, and Phil about their relationship with the series over the years. Civilization started with a wager. Sort of. The journey towards developing Civilization begins at a company called General Instruments Corporation in 1982. Sid Meier was a 28-year-old University of Michigan graduate and gaming enthusiast working for the company as a programmer. Wild Bill Steely was an analyst at the company and also a pilot. The two were introduced to each other during a corporate event in Las Vegas. Steely, the Air Force pilot, was sure he could beat Meyer at the arcade game Red Baron only to be surprised at Meyer's proficiency for playing the game. Sid explained that he was merely analyzing the programming of the game and predicting the game's actions, and that he could program a better game. Steely said if Meyer could program that game, then he would sell it. A few months later, Sid had made it, and Bill ended up selling it. The two went into business together and founded Microprose. Their first game, developed as part of that wager, would be called Hellcat Ace. An interesting aside to this, in 1988, Microprose employees were able to track down the very Red Baron game cabinet that inspired Sid and Bill to go into business together. This is kind of a funny story because when it comes to the first Civilization game I ever played, it was actually Civilization Revolution back in like 2008 on my Xbox 360. The very first Civilization game that I ever played was Civilization 4. I believe it was number 4. I first came to the Civilization franchise around 10 years ago with Civilization 4. And I've been playing since the very beginning. Um, I played Civilization and then I can remember when my father was stationed in Carlisle Barracks. This is actually one of my fondest memories of the game as a whole. Uh, we were stationed in the Carlisle Barracks in Carlisle, Pennsylvania, and the Youth Activity Center there, the Yak. Uh, they had a computer room, and all the computers had CivNet uh, installed on them. You know, back in those days, I, I wasn't really, I didn't know anything about PC gaming. I was just a Xbox kid in high school, and I like strategy games, and I always was very interested in, you know, war type games, controlling an empire and things like that. At the time, it was my first turn-based strategy experience on the PC, having played real-time games like Age of Empires and Rise of Nations for years. So my first impression of it was one of naivete and discovery. I was insanely overwhelmed and had no idea what was going on. I thought something was legitimately wrong with my game because you start out in one small area and the rest is dark because it hasn't been explored yet. The game is black? Why is the game black? I'd heard of Civilization, of course, and had seen various versions on shelves while growing up, but I'd never played it until 4. And despite that 4 was my first, I didn't really sink my teeth into a Civilization game until I got my hands on the fifth entry, which is, to this day, my most played game ever. Only really knowing the console world, I, I really had no idea what was actually out there. So. It was actually, funny enough, Civilization Revolution that really opened my mind to uh, a lot of the different possibilities, and then I started playing Civilization 4, uh, and then obviously Civ 5. Why is nothing loading? There's nothing here. What am I doing wrong? What am I supposed to do? I was so confused and so overwhelmed, I did not continue to play Civ 4. <laughs> Looking back now, it was completely foolish. I don't think I had the instruction manual. Someone let me borrow the game or something. If I had, I probably would have read through it and realized that's what the game is supposed to look like, but I had no idea. 
happened. Now, this is before video games had a multiplayer style as just a point of practice. This was uh, this was a, a unique version, so you could play LAN parties and that kind of thing. You could play multiplayer with other people, at least in the room. I don't recall if it did local online or anything along those lines. But we would have these long, long tournament style games with whoever was there and there's something so beautiful about that just as a metaphor frankly where you had this room full of army brats from all over the country from all over the world frankly playing civilization and pretending to be the leaders of all kinds of different countries and trying to take over the world in different ways Microprose was founded on the niche genre of vehicle simulators, but also produced strategy games like NATO Commander. Regardless of the style, most of the games produced by the young company stayed firmly within the boundary of the military and combat theming that was associated with co-founder Steely. This laser focus let Microprose grow and develop into one of the more successful game companies of the mid-80s. Meyer, however, was beginning to feel the urge to explore other genres. Sid and a fellow designer wanted to try their hand at a role-playing game with an idea that would eventually develop into Sid Meier's Pirates. While developing the game, however, there was a bit of pushback from Wild Bill who was unsure about entering into a new genre. This unease about non-military-based games would become a recurring strain between Sid and Bill over the next few years. Pirates, though, was a success. Another team of Microprose designers would use the leverage gained by Sid's genre foray as well as some of the technological tricks created during development to create Sword of the Samurai. An interesting tie-in to the first episode of Origin of the Series, by the way, is that one of the writers for that game was Sandy Peterson, who would go on to work for id Software as a level designer for Doom and Doom 2. Pirates is also notable because it started a trend that lasts to this day. It has Sid Meier's name above the title, a space normally only reserved for the biggest names in an industry. There are a few versions of this story as to why this happened. From all accounts, Sid is probably the last guy in the world to ask for that kind of recognition. One version of the story is that it was the late great comedian and noted gamer Robin Williams who had the idea and pitched it to Sid and Bill at a gaming conference. He said it would make Sid a star. The other version of the story is that Bill did it to differentiate Sid's new passion projects, like Pirates, from the other games that he believed to be the bread and butter of the company. Maybe it was one, or the other, or something in between, but either way, the naming convention stuck, and to this day, Sid's name appears above the games he creates. For those that are familiar with Bruce Shelley's work, two games immediately come to mind, Civilization and Age of Empires. However, Shelley developed his working relationship with Sid Meier on the game Railroad Tycoon. Shelley came to Microprose by way of Avalon Hill where he was a board game designer. After seeing what was possible with Pirates, Shelley knew he wanted to change industries and found his way to Microprose. One of the games that Shelley worked on while at Avalon Hill was an adaptation of a board game by Francis Tresham called 1829. The resulting game 1830 served as one of the inspirations for the next important game in Meyer's career, Railroad Tycoon. Railroad Tycoon was the first god game that Meyer designed. In it, you controlled a businessman with $100,000 in assets that is looking to build the next great railroad empire. Besides Shelley's work with 1830, another important inspiration for Tycoon was SimCity, Will Wright's 1989 classic that took the gaming world by storm. Much like SimCity, Railroad Tycoon unfolded as a real-time strategy game with the option to pause and restart time. Railroad Tycoon was another success for Meyer. However, it became apparent to Steely that Meyer was less interested in running a business. And for Wild Bill, that business was producing vehicle and combat simulation and strategy games. I have not been able to find an exact date, but at some point between Railroad Tycoon and Civilization, Sid Meyer was bought out of the company that he co-founded and stripped of his vice president title. He would be rehired as a contractor who received money upfront to develop games and royalties on any copies of games sold. This was the situation Meyer was in as civilization entered the horizon. The Civilization franchise will always be my favorite franchise in gaming. There is nothing a first-person shooter or a MOBA can do about it. I, it. They're never going to top my feelings towards 
these games. I'm not a young man anymore. <laughs> and as I've gotten older, my gaming tastes have narrowed. Not every experience holds my attention the way it used to. I need thoughtful games, interesting experiences. A few years back, I was in a phase of my life where I thought I was leaving gaming completely. <laughs> Hilarious, right? I have a YouTube channel, for God's sake. Here's a secret. It was Civilization that called me back. The Civilization series has meant the world to me over time. After my initial hesitation after trying Civ 4, I jumped into Civilization Revolution, which was on console, and had somebody help and explain kind of what I was doing, and as soon as I realized what kind of game it was, that was it. I was gone. I was totally involved. And now Civilization 5 is probably one of the top three games I have spent the most amount of time on. It could even be first. Civilization was one of those games that just grabbed me. Before I even fully recognized the importance of video games in my life, uh, when it was just that hobby, if, if you can even call it that, you know, because all kids played video games at a certain age. But Civilization was not like Super Mario Brothers or, or, or uh, uh, Doom or any number of games that everyone else seemed to play. It was a game for very specific kids. I really see Civilization as the centerpiece of an entire gaming mentality that I've matured into over my life. It's really the only contender in approachable yet immersive historical strategy that spans the ages. It has no competition. And I think the fact that I can look back years later and still think of scenarios that I was in, like some of my first few Civ 5 games back in like 2010, I can still remember the map, I can still remember the layout, and I can remember the events that took place. The fact that this game is able to do that like five, six years later uh, is incredible, and I, and I don't think any other game is like that. After Railroad Tycoon's success and his exit from Micropose, Meyer found himself looking to his past for the next game he wanted to develop. He had fond memories of playing Risk as a child and wanted to create something along those lines, merged with the idea of the development of a small c civilization. So he and Shelley began working on the first iteration of Civilization, capital C. Meyer and Shelley worked with an iterative process. Meyer would do a round of design and Shelley would play it, providing feedback as to whether it was fun or not. The initial push to design Civilization would be interrupted by business matters, though. Steely was not thrilled with his best team working on another project that was not the company's primary focus. Meyer convinced Steely of how important the development of Civilization was to him, and Steely cut him a deal. If he and Shelley worked on a game called Covert Action, they could return to work on Civ. At this point in Civilization's development, it was a real-time strategy game like Railroad Tycoon. After finishing Covert Action, Meyer and Shelley came back to Civilization and realized something important. Real-time would not work for the game they were envisioning. Instead, they reworked the game as a turn-based strategy, without which there would be no one more turn. The history presented in the game was never intended to be entirely accurate, as Meyer prioritized fun above all else. That's not to say there isn't anything true in there. Meyer did have some reference material. It was Bruce Shelley that did the bulk of the research for the manual, which according to Meyer was nearly 200 pages, and the Civilopedia, which had never really been done before in a game. For those unfamiliar, the Civilopedia has information on just about everything in the game, unit, building, or wonder. With the game nearing completion, the final hurdle was getting the attention of the Microprose staff that would be needed to finish the game. Meyer's projects were considered low priority at the time. When Microprose employees finally got their hands on the game, a funny thing happened. They couldn't stop playing. However, the game was also overwhelming and they needed to make cuts. Meyer and Shelley ended up reducing the world size by half and cutting out a branch of the technology tree. Civilization was released with a limited marketing push, but the game's addictive nature gave it the word of mouth needed to spread like wildfire amongst gamers. One more turn was born. Not long after Civilization's release, Microprose was purchased by competitor Spectrum Holobyte. While owned by them, Microprose would release Civilization 2, also considered one of the greatest games of all time. It was Civ 2 that introduced the isometric point of view that is familiar to most Civilization players. Meyer, however, was already on his way to Firaxis Games by the time Civ 2 was released. The legal status of the franchise bounced around a little bit. 
There were lawsuits regarding the name. Microprose would be sold again. In the meantime, Firaxis was brought on as the developer for Civ 3 and would eventually own the rights to the franchise again by Civilization 4. A rare time in gaming history where an IP ultimately ends up in the hands of those who care for it the most. It's hard to poetically encapsulate the legacy of a game as grand as Civilization, so I'm not going to. Here are some facts. It was one of the progenitors of the 4X strategy genre. It led to Bruce Shelley creating Age of Empires and inspiring strategy gamers and developers alike for years to come. Here once again are Drew, Hadrian, Phil, and Stacy to talk about what they think the legacy of the game truly is. I think that those games are always going to be the flagship of strategy games as a whole. It's always going to be that gateway drug. It's a game about building civilizations that can stand the test of time, but the game itself has done a pretty good job of that. People might not have thought of it this way before, but it's right up there with the little red plumbers and little green knights of the gaming world, especially when you're the kind of gamer that prefers to think while you play. Legacy of Civilization can truly stand the test of time. Many other games can only aspire to that kind of legacy. Even those who don't play Civilization know about the game. Many are intimidated, and it takes a lot to intimidate gamers, that's for sure. But Sid Meier has proven time and time again with pirates and railroads that these games are quality and they stand up and they make people want to play. One more turn is not just a slogan, it's, it's real. In this day and age where um, entire franchises can be abandoned uh, by fans because of how they treated it, because uh, of just misunderstanding the message of the game in general. It's really cool that you've still got, like, no, there has been no point in Civ history where people just abandoned the game en masse or criticized it to the point that they just, you don't have those, like, the Call of Duty Advanced Warfare stuff or Infinite Warfare stuff going on right now. You don't have moments of li like that with Civilization, with that franchise. Because no matter who has been developing it, whether it's Sid Meier's or uh, uh, Firaxis or, or whoever uh, is doing it, uh, they seem to always know who their fan base is. They seem to always have their head on straight about who this is for. I, I, I can't count how many times I've heard people say, oh my gosh, you know, Civ 4 was the first strategy game, or Civ 5 was the first strategy game I've ever played, or Civilization Revolution was the first strategy game I've ever played, and then it opened me up to all of these other strategy games, whether it's a, a MOBA or an RTS or other 4Xs. I mean, it, it really feels like it is the game that kind of breaks everybody in, and uh, I, I don't think anything will be able to top that legacy in the genre. Thank you for watching the second episode of Origin of the Series. I want to take a moment to call out the sources for this video. The primary source was an article and interview found on Gamasutra. Additional sources include an interview with Sid Meier from VentureBeat.com and retrospectives from Kotaku and ArsTechnica.com. The links to these articles are in the description below. I'd like to give my utmost thanks and appreciation to Drew, Stacy, Hadrian, and Phil for their support on this project and lending their voices to it. The first episode of this series was about the history of the Doom franchise, which you can check out here. If you enjoy this type of content, please leave a like and a comment below, and consider subscribing and sharing this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Take care, everybody.